only hurts. It never helps. Listen to the old pork chop express and take his advice on a dark and stormy night, all right? When some wild-eyed eight-foot tall maniac grabs your neck, taps the back of your favorite head up against a barroom wall, and he looks you crooked in the eye, and he asks you if you've paid your dues. Well, you just stare that big sucker right back in the eye, and you remember what old Jack Burton always says at a time like that. Have you paid your dues, Jack? Yes, sir, the check is in the mail. Well, you'll have plenty of time to live in a van down by the river when you're living in a van down by the river. Now, you kids are probably asking yourselves, hey, Matt, how can we get back on the right track? This is all historically documented, and you can even find it on Wikipedia. The Templars united with the Freemasons in Scotland because Scotland was one of the best places to retreat after their banishment as there was no papal influence. Another best place is where is now Switzerland, where they retreated through the trails of the mountains of France, which they knew very well. We see great progress in these two areas after the arrival of the Templars, and prior to Switzerland there are folklore tales that portray white knights helping the peasants successfully defend against professional invading armies. Scotland also successfully won their independence battle. In time, the power of the hidden Templars has only grown, and now they are trying to awake the beast at CERN, which is why they have a monument of Shiva, the destroyer of worlds, right next to the facility. Upon analysis, we realize that there is no way to represent the good in this game. Both Templars and Assassins are part of the same occult world. The biggest church split in history. The Catholic Church split. Satan is the spirit of division. Now, when you're dealing with what happened 500 years ago, what is a protest? Strife. Oh, one of my favorite days in my life was with Pope Francis. 
What a man. He's one of my heroes. And this is what he's all about. This whole thing. That's one of the things that got me so on fire about it. And I am on fire. Say together. Say Catholic. Lutheran. If there is no more protest, how can there be a Protestant church? What it is essentially, remember with the Knights Templar, this is dominionism. This is dominion theology about taking over the world. Solomon, as opposed to his father, started following the deities of his foreign wives, deities such as Ashtoreth, Chemosh, and Molech, which even required child sacrifice. What is this symbol? They say it's the Star of David, but there are no real references that connect this symbol to David. On the contrary, there are a lot of references that connect this symbol to the seal of Saturn, occult works, and Kabbalistic sources. It has more to do with the conquering of the forces of nature than with God's teaching. The occultists believe that through the use of human technology, conquering of these forces of nature through the alchemical mastery and the practice of the mystery Babylonian religions, man will achieve full control of the world and become immortal without the help of God. This process will be completed with the coming of the new age or the new world. They are followers of the bull gods which Solomon betrayed God for, the Templars, followers of Baal or Ba'el. That is why we have an interesting movie called The Brotherhood of the Bell, where it is being shown how the secret societies work and what can happen if the vows of secrecy are being broken. Do you swear that having been entrusted with these articles and letters since midnight this night, that you alone read them and did not communicate their content to any person whatsoever? I so swear. Having so sworn, are you now prepared to go forward? I am prepared. Mr. Dunning, for over 200 years, Brothers of the Bell have been initiated before this bell, and in the same ceremony, at sunrise. But that continuity depends upon one thing, obedience. Absolute obedience. If and when you are ever called upon by Mr. Patterson to pay your due bill, you must comply. Whatever is asked of you. Are you ready for the oath? I am. The oath, gentlemen. I, I Chad and do, do swear in absolute faith, faith that I shall reveal no secret of the brotherhood of the bill that I shall respect my brothers and myself, that I will act as they desire, secure their interests as if they were my own. And I pledge this, my honor, my fortune, and my life. This occult symbolism of the followers of Ba'el is pushed forward in Assassin's Creed, as well as a lot of misleading theories of how man was created, how secret societies work, and where humanity is heading. You can say it's sci-fi, but I personally think it's all part of the propaganda to create a Luciferian society. The same company which makes the Assassin's Creed series is the creator of Watch Dogs, a game which is also filled with occult symbolism. Why would a game which is supposed to be about materialistic down-to-earth topics has as its main logo the seal of Aleister Crowley, one of the most recognized practicers of occult teachings? Very core, this issue seems to tie right into the Knights Templar. And I know that sounds very strange from the get-go, but honestly, this, this deception that's coming into the church is actually tied to the Jesuit Knights Templar, the government of the Order of the Temple of Solomon. I mean, not only are we in the time where everyone's saying, you know, 
is there going to be a third temple? And then in 2013, it comes to light here that the Knights Templar are back. Um, you know, for, not that they ever went away, but they've come back into the public light. The Sovereign Magistral Order of the Temple of Solomon. 2013 AD. It's fully restored as an independent sovereign subject of international law in 2013, embodying the authentic Templar heritage. And we literally have a whole website here, which is dedicated to all of these official documents, legal documents, mind you, and the missions. This is what I want to show you, this Templar spirituality. And this is how this links with this deception that we're seeing, the worship of the goddess, the reverence of the divine feminine, Gaia. The temple rule proves that the Knights Templar were always dedicated to honouring the divine feminine principle as the spiritual feminine aspect of God. So you can see how this ties to the Roman Catholic Church, to the Jesuits, to Allah, the Moon Goddess, and to all of these false religions, but also this pagan New Age, which is actually the Old Age, Babylon agenda, um, and the throwing out of this masculine, we you know, we see all these attacks on God and, and um, the Old Testament and the truth of God and, and turning into this airy fairy emotional experiential deal without boundaries without restrictions without commands uh, and all of this stuff is tying into when you come to its very core the conspiracy at its very heart of the new world order the antichrist the paganism the the babylon agenda new world order is actually rooted in the knights templar who never went away but now in 2013 have officially come out into the public and declared themselves sovereign uh, a sovereign entity without territory but sovereign nonetheless so it's all about gnosticism and christian mysticism the divine feminine the uniquely ancient and diverse heritage of Templar spirituality was fully disclosed to the Vatican and officially endorsed by the Roman Catholic Church. Authentic Templar spirituality is a form of esoteric Gnosticism which is wholly compatible with the canonical Christian mysticism of classical Catholicism. Gnostic spirituality primarily concentrates on personal divine communion through the Holy Spirit here we go, look, Templar chivalry, look at this. This is the picture of the Pope with all the, the world leaders of religions, of false religions. Hinduism, Islam, Baha'i. And this is what they are showing. And at the bottom of the page, we can see all of these emblems, which say a lot, pontifical protection recognized by five Vatican papal bulls as Templar guardians of the church. Cooperation with Islam. Look at that, cooperation with Islam as a tool of the Jesuit Knights Templar. Look at this, the Knights of Saladin under Templar sovereign patronage. Diplomatic relations with the United Nations with the crest of Rome. Oh my goodness me. Look at this, United Nations. This is where all of these agendas are coming to. So, and remember with the United Nations that they have those books on New Age spirituality, Alice Bailey, and all of these people who were involved in this Gnostic counterfeit um, spirituality of the Antichrist and this is very similar this logo is very similar to what we see on some of the big Christian so-called Christian broadcasting networks the main logo of the game presents us with an image that I believe to be not the destruction of hell but the rise of the Antichrist and his legions 
We've got pentagrams on both left and right and the saint's logo in the middle, symbol of which meanings are highly debatable. It has been used, however, on many coat of arms across the world, as well as in sports teams, universities, architecture and military, one of the most relevant examples being the Israeli intelligence force. This wouldn't be the first time military intelligence is using occult symbolism. I suspect this particular savior to be an antichrist figure also because of the color purple, which is the main color in Masonic tradition and represents the unification of the pillars which opened the gates to their architects which will bring forth a new age. Specifically, the fifth age, which in Roman numerals is represented by the letter V, which we can find in the Saints Row developer company logo, where we can also see the dehumanized head of the approaching transhumanism. The showing of two Vs seems to be a main theme in the occult symbolism world. There is an interesting scene in the movie Kingsman where this theory is completely confirmed. In the mountains where the elites form a facility to preserve themselves, right would show the countdown to the new age. There is a V on top of the numbers, thus forming two Vs. I believe this to be very similar to the main logo of the game Saints Row Get Out of Hell. The A in GAT might also be an upside down V. This game masks itself as a comedy as an excuse to put forth a large quantity of satanic ideas. The game starts with a party in which we are told that using a Ouija board at a birthday party is tradition. It's tradition! Every slumber party has to involve a spirit board! Slumber party? How's it work? We ask it a question and the spirit of the board will reveal the answer. How? and is also known to be a worshipper of Baal, as well as a promoter of over-sexuality, human sacrifice and killing of God's prophets. She was the princess of Phoenicia and the wife of Ahab, king of northern Israel, which she also tried to convince and convert to Baal, Satan, worship. The main characters are being sent through the rabbit hole, exactly in the center of a pentagram, a symbol which we are going to see a lot in this game. As they are lifting from the ground, we are being shown a storm very similar to that on Saturn, which is another meaning of the pentagram. The XX is also a symbol of Saturn and the gates of hell, which is why in the next scene this theory is being confirmed by an entity which says welcome to hell, as some wood burns in the background in the shape of the XX. Welcome to hell. Portray the final image with occult satanic elements such as the pyramid and the lightning bolt which represents Satan. So to defeat Satan, apparently we have to learn ourselves how to use the demonic powers. Just collect some soul clusters and power up the halo, you'll be flying around in no time. After seeing this, I think we can clearly say that this character, by acquiring all the demonic qualities, step by step, willingly becomes a demon himself. The following scene is a pure MKUltra style mind control house, from the rainbow to the characters which are lost, hypnotized by the music. Indeed, behind the mind control projects, there is only demonic energy. On the walls, there are these messages telling the characters, and I suspect us, to follow directions, to follow the rainbow, the yellow brick road, which will lead us to the perfect world of togetherness. This is all part of the creation of an alternative, better reality in which the mind control victim can retreat in, while the new programmed personality is being allowed to take control. Program that sterilizes the potential for brilliance in children, those who actually survive schooling and survive conformity and continue on to think for themselves, truly are a rare breed. All children start out as curious, highly experimental minds, and then one day they're sent to school. Mandatory schooling has never consisted of anything but the memorization of monotonous dead facts and training children to master repetitious behavior. For the greater part of their day, everything the child says must match the interest of their school teachers. Their behavior must coincide with a set policy and a set regulation. They cannot use the bathrooms without permission. If they wish to speak, they must raise their hands. And after every hour or so, a bell rings and everyone must move to it. It couldn't be any more slave-like. And this type of training becomes a ritual for the child. It becomes the plot background for their television shows and books or the ideology taught to them by a teacher or a parent. An entire monoculture is being developed here, stripping children of their power to cause trouble for the state at an early age, training them to be good servants of the politically correct. Their environment is much like a prison, 
by the population lacking any ability to check the authority of the warden. The process becomes a matter of rubber stamping. They have no control over their entire lives, which is directly related to youth violence, because the only control they have is between each other. Mandatory schooling produces children who are either terrified of the tyranny of others or have been raised to perpetually exploit the conditions of others. It's just like the prison system. Forced cohabitation. The child's presence in certain buildings and their engagement in state-regulated behavior is under penalty of imprisonment. An entire army of truancy officers have been hired to make sure that no child is on the other side of the bars. At the end of 18 years of coercive state authority, the child is released into the world. It's like the end of an 18-year prison sentence. Now that you're trained to do as you're told, now you can be free. And the produce of these schools, or the state-controlled manufacturing operation, is a society willing to submit, to obey, and to listen. Forced behavior, which technically amounts to a type of slavery, will only inculcate a mindset of fear and terror. You need to be somewhere at a set time, either at the orders of an authority or a bell. Everyone in one mass shifts to another position or another place to engage in a new activity. They're trained to not only follow instruction, but they're also trained to follow a certain behavior. Rules, regulations, and laws are set for the children. They say you cannot do this to others. You can do this to others. This is acceptable. This is not acceptable. Standards of culture, morality, and behavior are imprinted into these new young minds that are in the blossoming stages of development. Their minds are being intercepted by the state and molded to conform to state standards. The first lesson they teach you is the orders of authority. The second lesson is to work with each other to achieve the desired ends of those in control. If a group of children are taught to engage in the same behavior regardless of what they want to do, then they will never fight back as adults. And this is your group of tenants who will live in roaches and never call the health inspector. This is your group of citizens who is easily terrified by police officers into voluntarily giving up their rights. This is your group of workers who surrender their lives to the corporation who tells them how to dress, how to speak, what time to wake up, which means they essentially tell you what time to go to sleep if they tell you what time to wake up. This is nothing new. These are the fruits of mandatory schooling. If we look into the roots of 19th century industrialism, the Civil War demonstrated to industrialists and financiers how a standardized population trained to follow orders without significant thought could be made to function as a money tree. It's no surprise that global power and corporate wealth is based on a third-rate educational system that works against developing individuals of true character and true intellect. Because the mindless bureaucrat or the thoughtless worker who will follow a system without question is the pattern that our system depends on. And this is what school produces. The system is not designed to educate the public, which is why federal and state bureaucracies call the shots, not the parents, not the local school boards. Every law is harshly enforced with maximum punishments. The tone of a principal is much like the tone of a warden, with no check on his authority. They will always have a way of using coercive ability to enforce a standard on the population. Strict punishment awaits any kid who disobeys this ruling force. And there is no doubt that an active student body reflects positively on school administrators. It's like factory floor men. They're fulfilling their quotas to the inspecting superintendent of the local school district. This is the reality of government training. The state doesn't care if children are homeless or on the streets or suffering from malnutrition and hunger. But the second the child fails to appear in school at the scheduled time, like a court date, the police are alerted. Until we abolish mandatory schooling, your child will be brought up as a slave so that he can accept becoming a slave. I'm sorry for you. And I for you, Thorndyke. You and your world. You know what would happen then? Don't forget their Reichstag fire trial. You know their genius for producing witnesses and documents to prove their enemies guilty of what they intend to do. Today, Europe. Tomorrow, the world. One of the first things you learn in this business is forget about capitalism versus communism. That is absolute nonsense. The two are behind the scenes, are hand in hand. You need the so-called conflict between the two to keep people focusing. Look, they keep you looking over there, you know, capitalism versus communism. You know, that makes a nice little picture. You know, you get books on it and films on it, uh, capitalism versus communism. That's not where the action is. The action is over here. are succeeding because the American people don't understand their enemy. They don't even know what's happening. People were extolling the virtues 
the virtues of Pat Buchanan and actually considering voting for that man for president and he sent them all a postcard and on the front of that postcard he identified himself as a high priest of the mysteries because on the front of his Christmas cards that he sent to all of his followers was the penis of Osiris, the phallus, the obelisk, with a nice red bow tied around the base which represented the testes. You know what he was saying to you? Are there any children in here? He was saying, he was laughing at you. And so was every other member of the Illuminati. He's a highly degreed member of the sovereign and military order of the Knights of Malta, which was taken over in the Peasants' Revolt in England by the Knights Templars who had sworn revenge upon the old Hospitallers of St. John's, which later became the Knights of Malta because of their role in the suppression of the Templars. How many of you watch Trinity Network? How many of you watch Pat Robertson? Have you ever seen the cross in the crown? Do you know what that means? It's the symbol of the Templars. The Knights Templar. It is the symbol of the unification of the church and the government over the people. Is that what you want? And if that happens, I'm going to have to take up arms all over again. And so will many of you because you're going to be persecuted. You see? Because whichever one controls the government, you're going to have to conform to that teaching. And if you don't believe in it, you're a heretic. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What is our common bond truly? Freedom. Freedom. Without freedom, you can't be a Christian no matter what denomination you belong to. You can't be a Buddhist. You can't own a donut shop. You can't drive from here to Oregon. You can't be an American because that's what it's all about. And that's the only thing that it's all about. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's about freedom. One of the main focuses of the Jesuit-run New World Order is the indoctrination and corruption of the young. We have seen how this is done by proliferating perversity through popular music. You're doing really well now, but didn't you release a CD like almost 10 years ago? Um, yeah, I mean I released a gospel record when I was 15 um, because I grew up in uh, you know, a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music and my parents are both traveling ministers and so I kind of sang about, you know, what was going on in my life at 15 and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out and so I sold my soul to the devil. not the least of which being the televised media and education system. Infiltration and subversion of the educational system of the United States so as to set up a system whereby public education has been purposely dumbed down and where the brightest minds were recruited into institutions of higher learning under Jesuit control has been an ongoing process noted and passionately warned against by Protestant educators throughout the 19th century. Give me a child until he is seven, and I will give you the man. <laughs> I 
So we see on a lot of these um, these big organisational level, a lot of Illuminati symbolism. And what it is essentially, remember with the Knights Templar, this is dominionism. This is dominion theology about taking over the world. So this explains the influx of false doctrine of Jesuit infiltrators into churches, into the mainstream Christian um, media, and all with this core belief of the Holy Grail, uh, the divine feminine Gnosticism that they are really pushing onto churches and losing those boundaries that they're advertising it as something like in in hollywood you know we need to get out of this box and we need to you know forget all the old stuff we need to free ourselves liberate ourselves liberals liberation from the old into this new this new spirituality which is a lot more humanistic and it's a lot more divine and, and you feel more you experience more and that's the cheese on the trap that they're trying to pull people in um, i mean yes there are certain good things to um reformation but they are they are staging a counterfeit reformation which is a knights templar gnostic reformation and they're pulling people into these horrific scenes which i showed at the beginning of this with bethel music and all of these people that have counterfeit um, counterfeit revivals, counterfeit prophecies, counterfeit signs and wonders. These groups that are actually pushing a Kundalini spirit. These, these, you know, these counterfeit crusades that they hold at the, you know, these these top levels, which are coaxing and coercing people into a counterfeit spirit. <laughs> 